<laughs> hey guys, Daniel James here. And today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at Audio Imperia's new library, Solo. The way we're going to be doing this is actually a bit old school, is I've written a short track. And what we're going to do is listen to that first. Then what we'll do is uh, break down the track and uh, see how I use Solo within it. And then we'll go on and either finish the track or play along with some of the uh, patches alongside what I've written so we have some context. But anyway, as you can see, I have a live chat room here. So I am doing this live. So when I'm talking throughout the stream, that's who I'm talking to. I'm not going crazy. But without any further ado, let's check out the track and let's get started. So as you can see, the track's going to be playing behind, but I did a little video just to inspire, give you the mood. Here we go. Let me restart that because all my hard drives had to wake back up. <laughs> Okay, so that's where we're up to in the track. So as you can see, I was going for, what, what was it you guys said? LD, LD, Elder Scrollsian, Eldian, Eldern. Anyway, so as you could see, I, I did some art there just to uh, get me inspired. And I was trying to write in the style of what if I was scoring a Elder Scrolls type project. But anyway, so let's jump in and take a look at what I actually used from solo and as i said this is in having a look so what we're going to be doing is basically just opening it up seeing what every patch has i assume most of you already know how the ui works from seeing the official videos so we're not going to go over what every dial and stuff does unless it's relevant like these legato retongued we will get to that uh but yes yeah, so let's just go through what we actually had in the track so i'm going to turn off i had a lot of reverb on that that's a personal choice but let me just turn that off and we'll just listen to some of these solo instruments playing by themselves It was meant to go up, but it didn't. <laughs> I didn't fix that MIDI note. Then we got this bit. That sounds messy as fuck. Let me just say that in the in the context, it's a bit more. In those sections, I like to have things slightly kind of bubbling up out of the <laughs> out of the way. So by in isolation, they sound a little bit messy. In fact, they are messy. And then. It's a bad line, but alas, it is there. So... Uh, you know, as you can see, I mostly used the woodwinds in this one. I did have some solo up here as well in the strings, I think. But I did, uh, like, one of the main things I like to do is show, like, how it all works in context. So, yeah, I did use the uh, the solo cello on channel four, which I don't even know if I've got anything on. Yeah, so we solo cello here. Yeah. 
Well, let me just show you that by itself. It's such a strong sound. It's got reboing, so. So this is actually a good place to talk about this, this feature. So the, one of the biggest features about this library that most solo instruments don't have is they have the two different types of legato. So with, with strings, it's rebowed and slurred. So that just means that when they play a note, when they get to the next note, they actually play like the bow moves again. So duh, 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 duh. Whereas a slurred one is da 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 right? So... That's all we're going to play that. So as you can see here, it says 0 to one, uh, 127. If you don't know what those mean, they're MIDI uh, velocity num uh, not velocity, yeah, velocity numbers, right? Well, it's MIDI CC only goes up to 127, but these ones specifically are velocity, as you can see here. You can change it to a CC. I keep it to velocity. So that just means that if I play 0, like if I play, <laughs> if I play softly, it's going to rebow every note. So you hear every note starts with a t, t, t not a t, but like you can feel the energy of the bow scraping back in the other direction. Hold it a bit longer so the algorithm doesn't get me. Hold it. Sorry, I don't want the algorithm to get me. And then if I play hard, so you see one, two, seven, once I get over the threshold of 63, as you can see here, you can actually change that. So if you want it to be mostly, or you want it to like be all slurred, but you only want it, you could set it so that like only when it's very, very soft, so under 17, it'll be reboot. So now everything's going to be slurred. But I actually like the rebo, and I actually kind of like letting it decide for itself sometimes. But the good thing about reboing it, it's better for those kind of marcato y type. play over something. Uh, oh, fuck, I'm playing in a different key. So as you can hear, absolutely beautiful sound in the guitar. Oh my god! He <laughs> started playing. Beautiful legato transitions. Of course, they do have sustains. And because it's uh, you know because it's uh, solo instruments, you know you do get that quartet sound very quickly. Although I noticed that they do have a lot of um, dynamics built into the. So if I just hold the note, listen how it swells naturally by itself. Which is fair enough. Uh, spiccatos, obviously. That just sounds a bit like makeup. So they're very, very aggressive, very. Like, the, I don't think I used any of these. So when it comes to solo instruments, I'm mostly using the legato. 
but I will play through the sound so you can hear them. Good strong sound, and then of course we have uh, half tone and whole tone trills. But again, most of these things with solo instruments, like again, I'm only showing this from my perspective. When it comes to solo instruments, a lot of the time I'm mostly just using these because if I'm using, uh, like back in the day, if you wanted to do like, right? So like if you were doing something like that, usually uh, if you had a, a line like that, usually you would use it on some sort of short note because a lot of legatos couldn't handle the da-da-da-da, but this. Because it's got the rebo, you can actually have more of a... It's hard to do because there's a delay on my keyboard whenever I stream, so I'll try and show you here. So if I just solo this part. <laughs> That's slurred. So let's make these all reboed. And you see, because it's got that accent at the beginning, dun dun dun. You get the accent. So instead of having to, uh, you would use the short notes because it would help solidify that pulse, solidify that rhythm, right? And with the slurred legato, it sounds good, but usually it would be like, which I actually kind of prefer. Like if I was doing like the big jump slow, it didn't sound great. But so maybe if I make that one a rebo. You see, so like the bad one, you can just change it to a rebo. But even the slur sounds good. But what I was trying to point out is that sometimes when you're when you're doing these kinds of lines, and specifically I mean like the ostinato, like legato based ostinato, like this, you want sometimes that accent. On the, on the front because then it solidifies the pulse. Like you wouldn't always just do it straight eights. You know, like if you had like, duh, 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 duh. If you had something like that, that was a repeat in line, right? Right, but now if we make it all reboed, it should have more of an act. You should feel the pulse more. Could be completely wrong. It's just that's what my brain's telling me it would do. Oh, that wasn't crossed. There we go. That's a bad rhythm. <laughs> Do. Ba da 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 da. Whatever. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> I just realized that it makes sense in my head, but like that just sounds like a line going dun 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 dun. But you get what I mean, hopefully. Right, so that was that. Let me just pull in uh there's action strings. Let me pull in the violin and the viola, because I didn't use those, I don't think, in the track yet. But like I said, as this is an Avena look, we have all the opportunity in the world to finish this off on stream, so. I noticed that the slurred legato with the violin gets a little, what's the word? Soulful? Gets, gets a bit soulful. Right, what key are we in?
So it actually fits in really nicely. It cuts. Like, it's very rare for them to cut quite so strongly. So I appreciate that a lot. Let me just try the viola. I love reverb. so beautifully right so that's that's the strings again we'll get back to them i'm just giving you a brief look at how some of them work so we did have some brass down here i put it in the wind section i just preferred having it in all of the uh so i had a solo french horn solo clarinet i got the descant horn as well i did have a solo violin it's on track five did i use it i didn't use it that was what that was about six and then i had solo operatic oboe okay so I'll put the I'll put the horns in the horn section so they're not drowning in reverb just so we can listen to them like in context. I'll only put on the strings as a backing for now. So we've got less of a less distraction. So as you can hear, beautiful legato. So one of the things I mentioned about the strings was they had the, the re-bowing, right? So with the horn, we have re-tonguing, which, you know, re... <laughs> so you can either re-finger it or re-tongue it, right? That's that's how it works with, with horn. With the horns, you either re-tongue it or you re-finger it. <laughs> Again, sentences that my wife in the other room are probably going, what? And I absolutely fucking love this, right? So usually when I'm writing with horns and I really, 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 really want Audio Imperia to do a big version of this, like their next library or even an update to one of their old ones, whatever it is they have to do to make this happen. I want this option of re-tonguing and fingered, like I want that for everything. And the reason is, so with most Legato, as you heard, I was playing soft. But re-tonguing is, you know, like when you've got those lines where you go, la-da-da, dun-dun-dun. The re-tonguing, the re so I'm just going to make it so it's only ever re-tonguing. Uh, wait. Yeah. The other way. The other way. Go the other way. Oh, I can't. I've broken it. Yarn. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. It's too finicky. Uh, maybe if I just flip it. I can't change it. It's too... I can't. There we go. I couldn't. So now it's only retongued. And listen, so what you do is in the past, if you wanted to get a more rhythmic horn line, what you would do is you would layer it with a, a staccato or, a, you know, well, you can't spiccato, but like a staccato note, right? But a lot of the time, staccatos are blown a lot harder than just retonguing it, right? Because you, you all you're doing is stopping the air and literally blowing again. 
you're doing that. So instead of going la la la, you're going ba, da, 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 right? So can you hear that? The, the difference. So let me just flip it over so you can hear. This is slurred. Right? And then this is uh, retoned. Play the different melody. It's got more of an accent, so you could be like... So do playing all the wrong notes there because I'm trying to focus on this fucking where <laughs> I was trying to figure out where the cutoff point was how hard because you see like where I play is like right on the you see how it's like changing between the 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 velocity at which I te tend to play the keys seems to be right on the edge so I need to figure out my balance which way round would you guys have it would you have it slurred when you play soft or slurred when you play hard or would you, you know i feel like the retonguing should be when you play hard so so it's normal it's normal most of the time oh did that the wrong way so it's it's fingered which is like the regular way samples do it and then when you play hard Beautiful, beautiful. And then we have the solo trumpet. So solo trumpet is a... And this has the same approach. So again, if I hold the note, one of the ways they've done this is they've built a lot of the dynamics into the actual... So you see the vibrato, and I don't know if the dynamics were intentionally a bit swelled. It could just be as they go into vibrato, they get a little louder. But they've managed to balance it to a point where it doesn't feel like it's too overbearing anywhere. Such a beautiful tone. So now let me try these uh, classical mixes. So far, I've just been going over this. Now let me just uh, show you what the different types of mixes sound like. In fact, I actually mostly prefer this, just going over to the classical. But
I like being able to do that. You know what I mean? Being able to go da 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 with a trumpet is actually <laughs> harder than it seems on most libraries. Beautiful. Right, the descant horn is basically like a French horn, but higher. It's like a soprano French horn. Goes up to like this high D, or whatever note that actually is. Dodgy question. <laughs> it doesn't really play nicely in the big sections. I had this section at the end here, which it would work quite nice with actually. Or I'm just kind of playing piano chords. I don't actually have any solo playing here. I turn everything on. It's like such a high, beautiful sound. I've always loved the Descan horn. I, I have the Cine samples one. They're both very comparable, but like just as a package of solo instruments all together, like it really covers the gambit. Let me just try it with, with actual horns. Uh, which one's it on? It's on four, right?
So as you can hear, one of the cool things, like I improvise a lot. That's one of the ways I work. So because they have this kind of natural swell within, you can hear I'm able to just... Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. You hear I can just like hold a chord, right? And then if I leave that hanging, listen, it has like its own... Sorry, I'll end up going over them the whole time. Wait, where's... Oh, there it is. Anyway, so as you can hear, very easy to improvise with. Beautiful images up there going. They should release a, a bagpipe. I agree. Right, so we did the brass. So I think now we're on to the woodwinds, right? No, that's percussion. <laughs> uh, let's come down here to the woodwinds. So yeah, the woodwinds... Uh, so the strings have re, uh, they have slurred and they have rebowed. The brass has re-tongued, re-fingered, and so does the uh, woodwinds. So what we got in number one? So French horns, number one. So I have the clarinet. Clarinet's probably, I can never decide between clarinet and flute is my favorite woodwind. And clarinet is a really good one for that uh, re-tonguing. So this one I'll play over the piano bit at the end here because it's very... And now, so the thing with woodwinds, just something about their character to me, always just sounds good in reverb. So like when I'm doing it, like I'll bury it in reverb like this because woodwinds, for whatever reason, the way that they carry a sustained note seems to work really well, regardless of the scenario in big, deep reverbs. So as an example,
I like doing this. It's hard to do with the with the. So it's really fast as well. weird harmony at the end there. Just the strings for now. Strings and then whatever I'm playing. So right now, by the way, if you didn't get if you didn't gather, we're playing the flute. Uh, so we have the flute at the minute, and then well, yeah. So let's just fiddle with the flute for now. So again, sorry, same concept. So as I play, uh, as I play soft, we have the fingered. In fact, I'm going to keep it more. Uh, yeah, more fingered, so. <gasps> Whenever you do that, always reminds me of Ghost of Tsushima. But that's what I mean. That's the power of having that re tongue. Just that little, that little, uh, it's hard to explain, but the, the best way I can explain it is it's a glottal stop. The way when you re tongue, it creates like that sound. So, like when I say the word butter, like when I say butter or water, instead of a T, I do a glottal stop, which is where all the air kind of stops in my throat. And it doesn't create a hard accent, it creates like a muted accent, but like water. Like it's it's still an accent. I'm still enunciating the T, but I'm enunciating it with my throat rather than putting my tongue and going T, right. So whoa, ah. And when you do that uh, re-tongued flute, instead of it being like a staccato, like a t, like a, p, it's more just like if you're replacing the air on your tongue. Like, so you just get that kind of glottal stop, not a hard transient, but you get that. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a term for it in music. But that kind of thing is what I was doing with that, like, go, uh, that Ghost of Tsushima thing. It's very important for that type of playing where you go. Whereas in the past, it would just be. 
which by the way still sounds fucking incredible with solo like without reverb but like doing the sounds good sounds fine but the other way around You, you can tell the difference, right, guys? <laughs> just so that I'm clear that you guys understand what I mean by that is it's very powerful to just have that glottal stop on the... It, it's surprising. Like, it's things like this. When I talk about, like, constantly, I'm constantly talking about innovation and coming up with something I don't already have. That is something I don't already have. Therefore, whenever I'm doing solo instruments, these solo instruments have more functionality and sound great than most of my other solo libraries. So therefore, they, they replace them because they just have more options. Now I can, I can do that type of sound, which is actually like, and again, it's not, you have to look at samples like this. Samples is, a, it's like a language. It's not always what you say, it's how you say it. And like there is a difference, like in again, to use the, the glottal stop in English accent, it differentiates between a posh person and a, a working class person. You know, usually the working class person has the glottal stop, like me. Whereas like a richer person will will pronounce the T's. It's butter, it's water. You know, it's 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 usually reserved for the lower classes to not pronounce the T's within letters. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see just by just by having something as simple as a glottal stop, we can tell the difference between two different types of people, right? And it's the same in music. Just having that glottal stop says something. Yeah, I can't I can't turn on the fucking. <laughs> I'm trying to get the slur going again. But you see what I'm saying. It does by having the glottal stop, it gives you more of a way of shaping what you're trying to say so that you can say it the way that you want to. Because that's something samples didn't have for a long time. And that's actually where a lot of the humanity of samples is hidden, is in those little ways that we say it, those little subconscious, like when I like when I say water, I'm not intentionally dropping the T. It's just that's the way it feels correct. And it's the same with the player, except with more emotion. They're looking for when to use the the, the glottal stops, when to use the uh, retonguing, when to use the refingering, depending on the lines. But the way they choose to play it adds a phrase to like it adds a shape to the phrase of a particular one and being able to do that i just i love it i love it i think it's great i think it's a great sound and i think all libraries from now on should have it or i'm going to call them out for not having it. <laughs> but let's uh let's we already did this so now we're on to the oboe well, except they've got it's on stack of for some reason in the piano. Now with reverb.
<laughs> Dumb is where that was supposed to go at the end. Beautiful sound. I haven't loaded up the uh, the bassoon for some reason. I did have it, but it, it's gone. Oh, it's got an English horn too. Fuck. The oboe. Yeah, I looked at the oboe. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the solo bassoon. Uh, and for shits and giggles, this will probably fuck up absolutely everything. Let's just move everything down by two. <laughs> so we're in a different key. Okay. Just strings again. So now we've got the bassoon. You know what? We'll have a little bit of piano as well. So we've got the bassoon in now. We should have had the bassoon. No, wrong one. It's on track nine, not eight. You fool. So we an octave down. Here we go. Less reverb for this. So with this, like I actually feel like the, the mix of the bassoon's a little strong. So I'm actually gonna use the uh let's go down to a classic mix, see how that sounds. Yeah, it's a lot more subdued. Yeah, that's a much more relaxed. It's high range, it's really pretty. Such beautiful sounds. Okay, right. English horn. Same same vibe, but let's just try it with the English horn. Okay, right. right. Reverb off, and I'm gonna play it over here. Thank you. 
It's tough to do. I, you, okay. The clicking, the clicking in most libraries annoys me, but for some reason they've managed to nail the volume level of the clicking. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, and then of course we also have the uh, choirs. That's what one of the things about this library that is so incredible is is most solo libraries will focus on one individual section. So you'll either get like a solo strings library, solo brass library, solo choir library. It's one of the first I could think of that actually covers all of them. Um, could have done with a male choir. I would have appreciated a male choir. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm trying it up against Dominus. So for those of you who know, Dominus is like my main go-to pad sounding library. And I know I know people on VI Control are already giving me shit because I'm using other libraries with it. But you see, the thing is, is when I use sample libraries, I very, very, very rarely, and when I say that, I mean never, ever use libraries by themselves. Sure, a demo would sound great if it was all just the library, but I'm not sure how many people are buying solo just to do solo instruments. I mean, like, sure, you could be doing some quartets and stuff, but when I use these types of things, I tend to use them as part of a bigger whole. So when I show them, so like if I show like Dominus playing its part, uh, well, what I'll do is, yeah, let me put this on, I'll put the choir on, and I'll turn it down then. So we'll we'll improv with that. And then of course we have the operatic is this oh why is it going down there oh because my you see that that's a weird jump see how it jumps from one to synths instead of going down to number two bizarre I wonder why it did that cubase being cubase So let's, uh, I mean, I wish it was, uh, 
let's let's try doing it like we did the other day with the other with Sahara, you know, like where you can kind of go. Do you want to try it with the operator? Let's try them together. Well, what would we do? It'd be like just singing together. Yeah, it's really hard with solo vocals to get it to cling to the top note. I wish that solo libraries in general had like a stick to the top note option. So no matter what chord you're playing, it always defaults to the highest note. That way you would be able to improvise and play chords at the same time. What would be great is if like there was a MIDI script that was like, that just broke it up. Like if you play five notes, it, it'll pick and put like the bass instrument on the far left note. And the, the lead instrument on the far right. Not that you always play top lines as melodies, but it's much easier to differentiate. And by the way, if you're wondering how I do that, so what I have to do is, like, if you just play chords, it gets confused of where it's supposed to go. So what I do is I kind of arpeggiate the thing. So, like, I'll go up the F and then... See, look, it's not picking up that top note anymore. Yeah, it's hard to do.
Hey, thanks for that, Matthew. I, I will do that eventually, but not, not on today's stream. We've got other things we need to be doing. Right, and that was the operatic. So that was all of the instruments. And so now let's just quickly, I know on the vocals, there was some other, there was some other types of voice, right? Well, not other types of voice. That's a weird, weird way of saying it. Uh, like there's oohs, I mean. So let's change her over to an oo. Uh, let's play over this end section. Yeah, let's just move everything down to again. I just like to every now and again move the key around so that things stay fresh for me. No, we'll just leave it here. Right, so now we're on ooze. Me piano, I need me piano. Even though that ended minor, if you <laughs> throw that big major on top, it's like, oh, let's see what you're doing there. Now the operatic doing ooh. Let's, I do love, I, Jan, I fucking love this library. <laughs> this is my, by the way, like, and if there was any, unless there was any like misunderstanding, this is by far my go-to solo library now. Like they're all great. They all have extra features. This is fun. I mean, you can see it's just fun to play. All right, let's do this with solo operatic 
She's doing ooze. Big bit. have the piano on again it's always the piano by the way piano and like little just a little combo that always sounds nice is piano and chalice together it's like magic let me just let me just jam to that quickly such a beautiful tone and just a high string do i have a high string on that Oh, I don't. <laughs> These sing the right note. Right, so they got sustains as well. Probably wouldn't use these much. Maybe if they were at, like drowning in reverb, would I use them like that? I don't tend to use sustains that much. Like a lot of the time they're just there as an option for those who need. show us the oboe yeah sure so like we've covered all the instruments now so now i just want to have a play with a few more of them right, so let me just put on some back in so this can be easy way too loud oboe down in the winds which which track do we have on oboe is on number eight I wonder if we can do this. Okay, so I can't do that. For some reason, I don't know if you guys can see this, but like, maybe if I do it like that, and then do this like this, like it won't let me, it won't let me key up and down between the two instruments, which means literally I have to do this manually, which is a pain in the ass, but okay.
Oh, that's a weird chord. It's very discordant. I like it. Oh God, it did it again. Hang on. I just noticed my Skype is, uh, not the Skype, my, uh, what's it called? Slack. My fucking Slack keeps going off. That wasn't you guys. Let me change this key quick. Uh, so you wanted me to try some of the, some of the mic positions, right? So maybe if I bring this down, so this was down here at eight. Maybe if I bring the strings down, can I do that? Is that, you going to allow me to do that? What, why? Look, look at this. What logic? Okay, right. What logic? <laughs> what logic is this? So if I was to push the key up, up key, it goes to brass instrument. If I push the down key, it goes to brass instrument. It thinks, it thinks it's here, the track for some reason. Because what I do is usually I just push the key like this. I go up and down. But for some reason, it's like jumping wildly between the different tracks. I don't know why. Because normally what I do is, is like I'll hold my pad, right? Like that. And then I use the key, the pad down. Oh, there we go. For some reason, now it works. I literally changed nothing, but now it works. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight it. I'm not even gonna comment on it. You want to see different mic positions. So let's put it on, so. I want to put it on the classical. We'll put it on the classical one first. Okay. Reverb going back on.
<laughs> Dodgy question. Sorry, I was getting way too into it. I needed to fuck with myself there. Right. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. Uh, but you wanted to hear mic position. So, oboe, advanced. So let's turn off that one. Oh, let me turn off the reverb. All the reverbs. That was S1. I'm not sure the difference between S1 and S2. If we've still got yarn in, maybe he can tell me the difference between the two. I imagine stereo one, stereo two. Two different spot mics, thank you. We're on the D, so I'm guessing Decatry, right? Can you change the patterns? Not that I can see. Doesn't appear like you can. By the way, for anyone wondering in the chat room right now, uh, Jay Hoagland is the uh, works for. Well, he is he is Audio Imperia. So if you have specific questions, technical questions, ask him. That way, people on YouTube can see the answers too. Oh God, I hit a, I hit a hung note. My day's been ruined. I got a stuck note all of a sudden. I wonder what triggered that. It's when I went down low. Love the Decker. Now we have the Outrigger, I assume. Oh. I keep wanting to go down to that low D. And then lastly, the far mic. So what I would probably do is see which, see how it sounds that I like. too close sounding that actually sounds better to me it sounds distant so it sounds relative like to the rest of the so like just sort of pulling it back I like pushing woodwinds a bit further back Bit more. Because like if you if it's too close, then like it's a focused instrument. But if you want it just sitting in there, pulling back the close, pulling back like the deck, pulling back the closer microphone, so it's just the wide further ones. You see how it sort of sits. You see how it sort of sits back with those instruments. You know. Let's put this on. Uh, put this on harmonic. Mm. 
So then this is just my normal reverb. So like normal everyday reverb. Now with my extreme reverb. Beautiful sound. I wonder how many times I've said beautiful sound today. Probably quite a few. do it with the wind. <laughs> Why did that happen?
Hey, that was fun. But yeah, so sorry, I totally forgot I was streaming for a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, very easy to get in and play uh, live. You know, just sort of improvise. And the thing I love about it is the sounds are just so responsive. Oh, it doesn't go down that low. I do wish they had that uh, option that Orchestral Tools has, you know, where you can extend the range. But all in all, for having a look, that is going to be our having a look at Audio Imperia's solo. As you can tell, what I wanted to do with this was just in context, load up the library, go through the sounds and then just play with them, you know, just play with them up against the actual song that I'd written and see how they work. And as you can tell, no matter whether you're putting the, like the, the solo instruments in amongst uh, their own, like, so this is just them by themselves, but said this guy's in there for some reason, let's put him back up there. From the beginning, please. There we go. Apparently, you can change the range. There's me giving it the big and about. You all know how it all works. Dynamic range, 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 range. This one, no, that's MIDI. How do I change the range? Dynamic range, expression, dynamics, start, legato, no, 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 hall, no, 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 basic, no. How would I change it? Bottom right. Velocity curve, click the drop down. Ah, okay. Okay. Wait. But that's velocity curve. How does it? Oh, transpose range. I see. This must be new. <laughs> There's me giving it the big end, like you already know how this works. I don't even fucking know how it works. You see, like this is the kind of stuff that should be. I'm going to say this now is like this is a drop down thing. But because this was just on velocity curve like this, I just assumed this was the on-off button for the velocity curve. So stuff like this, uh, uh, Yarn is here. Like with UI design, if you have a drop down and there's more controls, I give Spitfire shit for this all the time. If you have controls that are usable like this, make sure that this button is different from, say, this reverb. You see how this reverb is the exact same design as this, except this has a drop down? Like, usually when you have a drop down, it means more options like the one you're looking at, like this, linear shelf fixed. That drop down makes sense with this. However, I would not have known because there's nothing that indicates this is this section here is a different and unique section to everything else. Like, this is the only one that has its own drop down. Oh, Christ's sake. Octave and so on. And then low, yeah, okay, the low note goes down. You can drag it all the way down like that. Right, so that was on number two. So let's see what it sounds like in the extended range. On the wrong one. Octave down. Ah, oh, there we go. You did add it. You did. You guys did add it. You heroes. So I take it back. I take it back. They they absolutely did add the extended range, and it's really easy to use too. Just hidden. You got to make this more obvious. You got to make this more obvious, Jan. Make this this little section here more obvious because it doesn't make too much sense. They have polyphonic legato too. Fuck. <laughs> Should have been using that the whole fucking time. Anyway. Well, actually, no, I didn't want polyphonic legato. I only wanted one legato. I just wanted it to only pick the top note. Let's see what a French horn sounds like going into crazy range. Like you you wouldn't want your French horn coming up here anyway. You do have uh, polyphonic legato, but I, like, what would be cool is if with the polyphonic legato, or like if you had legato, but it was like 
top weighted, top weighted legato. So if you were playing a chord, it always played the top note. That would allow people to sort of improvise along with it. Um, but yeah. What? Why the fuck is there a synth playing all of a sudden? I know the sound of that. That was Omnisphere. Don't know why that started playing all of a sudden. My Cubase is being so weird today. That's getting way that's getting out of control. <laughs> it's getting out of control when you're having too loud. Oh god. I need to use my expression more. I'm I'm using way too much just uh, my my habit tends to go towards uh whatever I was saying. Whatever I was saying. But anyway. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this having a look at solo. Let me give you my conclusions on the library. So as I mentioned, these videos are mostly for how I use the library. I mostly showed the legatos today because that is 90% of how I use solo instruments. Uh, I showed it up against, uh, I showed it in a track in context. I showed it uh, up against other instruments in solo. I showed it up against those things. I showed it in solo, showed the microphone positions. So you get a good idea of what this library sounds and plays like. The main thing I wanted to show you is just that it plays so very well with itself and with other instruments. Like that is a very, like solo instruments have this, this tough thing sometimes that they're too, they're too specific to themselves. Like they sound great, but when you put them with other instruments, they tend to either stick out too much or tend to fall apart. That's where things like mic positions and mic, uh, you know, mic options are useful. Uh, the other thing with solo instruments is how well they play together. Like normally I don't play them like that. I just play them as legato instruments, but these are now by far my go-to solo instruments. They are incredible. Like the thing, the biggest, the biggest addition that they have, the other ones uh, that don't or, or they should have is the difference between the types of legato that happens when you change. And I mean, what happens when you uh, change velocity. So strings have done this for a while, but usually they use it as a portamento trigger. So you'll play your part and it'll just be legato. But then when you either play really hard or when you play really soft, it will trigger a, a portamento. It's a similar kind of idea, except here they're using two different types of ways of changing between the notes. The two types with strings is rebowed, which is every time you play a note, you rebow, you play like the bow goes another full distance. So if we're going da 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 da, it'd be da 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 da. Whereas uh, a fingered legato will be da 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 da. Rebowed is da 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 da. And that like there's only a few that have done that. I, the one, the first one that came to mind, the first one that came to mind that actually did it and made a point out of it was the East West quantum leap Hollywood strings. And that was the key selling point of it. And for some reason, rebowed legato never became like a thing, never became like a major thing. But now, now that I've, I've had it in this library and it's been used with velocity control, I think that works great. Cause even when you're playing, 
sometimes it will just add the correct one in because you tend to play... <clears throat> I mean, if you've been playing an instrument a while, you tend to play it how you speak. If you're getting more intense, you play the key harder. If you're playing soft, you play softer. So having a uh, controller which responds to that uh, that reality of how most people play is very useful because then you're playing and it will <laughs> more often than not be the correct type of either retonguing, rebowing or slurring, it'll be the right type because you tend to lean that way anyway. And then, so with the brass and the woodwinds, having the option to either slur, which is at refinger, which is where they change the note with the, with the valves or to read tongue, which is where they, instead of blowing, they go, they re tongue or they basically use their tongue to re, uh, uh to, to trigger the next legato. They, they use their tongue to uh, accent a different note. Uh, by using what I call a glottal stop. It's it's how I don't pronounce T's in my words, like Walter becomes Walter. I'm just stopping and it creates not a transient short, like it, it, the transient at the start of it isn't harsh. It's a soft transient. That's what a glottal stop is. And that's what retonguing does. It gives you, I mean, you can retongue aggressively, but here with legato, it retongues that kind of subtly so that you're no longer having to layer it up with a staccato uh, articulation in order to get that rhythmic kind of legato works brilliantly in re reverb works brilliantly just in general so all in all like i think this is a fantastic library i believe it's on sale it's on intro price at the minute right for 199 is that correct uh yarn is in so i won't say that without uh i won't say that with, <laughs> without a guarantee until Jan says it. Okay, so it's currently $199. And genuinely, I don't know how else to say this, but like at that price, this is this is a steal. Genuinely, this is a steal. Like this is going to be my solo pack from now on because it has all the instruments. They're consistent with themselves, though. They're coherent with themselves. They work well with other instruments. They have new features. They're recorded in a nice sounding room. Audio Imperia has always nailed legato, particularly with voices, which is hard to do. There's only two, two companies in the world now that, that do it well. is Audio Imperia and Zero G, who we did Sahara the other day. It's such a hard thing to get right. Even people, like even other companies, which I won't name, <laughs> have done vocal libraries, which just have not nailed that legato tone, particularly in vocals. All in all, it's insane. I mean, like the descant horn, for example, like that is such a rare instrument to find. I think you can also get it from Cine Samples, but that alone is, I think, $99 just from, uh, the one from Cine Samples is $99 just for the descant horn. And again, for those who don't know, that is the, like the high pitch, like the soprano French horn. It's a super high, like that is a rare instrument to find. So the fact that you have it bundled in in a $200 pack when buying it individually elsewhere, literally you you will struggle to find it as a sample and for less than $100. So even just having the Descant horn in here makes it a great value proposition for those who don't have that horn already. And like that kind of horn is sort of like a... Uh, like a John Powell, Harry Gregson Williams, like doing fantasy. It's that kind of sound, you know? Amazing. Uh, so all in all, absolute value for money. Great, great new innovation in the technology. Actually, new sample techniques. Not just saying we've made new sample techniques and doing the same ones. They've actually added new features which are usable for us as composers, not just a bullet point on a box. Fingered and tongued legato. The difference between them is is significant. Like I know it doesn't seem like it, but music. A lot of the difference between amateur music and good music is the attention to detail it's the it's the nuance it's the it's the, the the little details which make something special because then it feels correct because it's like yeah th if you think of music like language if you were to speak like me uh, without my t's and stuff but you were speaking to posh people it wouldn't quite work because you haven't quite enunciated what you're trying to put across correctly in a manner which is suitable 
and having the option to now be suitable without a compromise of having to like layer staccatos in order to get the rhythmic legato. That is awesome. So I don't know if you guys can tell this. Really loving this library. Digging it. Absolutely worth getting. It's by far the best solo package out there on the market by far at the minute. I'm looking forward to the competition. I'm looking forward to seeing how they improve. I'm, I want to see Audio Imperia's instruments from now on having these options in the legato. All in all, great library. Go get it. It's it's one of those ones that very rarely I say, trust me, this is just going to be the one. Um, did I compare the vocals to Jaeger? Uh, no, I didn't. But I'll do that after the stream because that's not the point of this video. But anyway, I hope you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is where the video is going to end today. So if the chat room here wants to say bye to them or if you want to say bye to the chat room, feel free. But thank you for watching. I hope you found this uh, interesting. As, as I mentioned, a lot of these videos now, I'm assuming that you've already seen the technical analysis that the, that the companies themselves are putting out. I think that's probably better when the company themselves are showing you how to use the actual UI and things like that. And then it's for people like me to show it in context, to show how I use it in practical terms, how it sounds out the box, how it sounds with other things. That's the purpose of this video. So if you came here looking for in-depth UI tutorials, that's not going to be how I approach them because I found based on my YouTube analytics that most people just skip through the video to find the bits that interest them anyway. So I'm, I'm more focusing on giving you more content that you can click to and listen to and make a decision rather than trying to uh, do Jan's job for him because they already do the videos beforehand but anyway if you're watching this on youtube we are going to end here so make sure to subscribe bell button whatever the fuck it is youtube makes you do in order to <laughs> to interact these days to follow uh the piano is the gentleman and i shall see you guys next time